Hello and welcome to the presentation. My name is Gary Andrews and I work at the Food Technology Branch at Caffrey Lockery Campus. What I want to do in this presentation is give a brief overview of sensory assessment, its application and an overview of the support services in sensory analysis and evaluation we offer at Caffrey. Sensory evaluation, a definition. Sensory evaluation is a scientific discipline used to evoke, measure, analyze and interpret reactions to those characteristics of foods and nutrients as they are perceived by the senses of sight, smell, taste, touch and hearing. Within the food industry of late, it has grown significantly in importance, sitting alongside chemical and microbiological analysis as a means of assessing quality of raw materials and food products. Sensory evaluation, practical application, continued quality assessment of products or raw materials, determining variation in sensory attributes associated with processing variables, geographical region and production season, Variability is a given, with a wide range of factors coming into play that can affect this. Developing new or improved products. Optimising a product's flavour, texture, colour to attract specific target audiences. Assessing competition. Competitive benchmarking and such activities are used to compare your products against other competitors using a set of criteria or characteristics. This is used to measure the performance of a product and compare it over time against others. Assessing shelf life. Determining during the duration of a study when a product becomes unacceptable and ingredient substitution. For example, in a cost reduction or clean label exercise where you want to identify any perceivable difference on a variety of characteristics. Sensory attribute perception. Generally speaking, the perception of food is not a simple process in as much as we as assessors are bombarded with overlapping sensory attributes. Typically, we see the appearance of the product first, followed by the aroma, Upon ingestion, we have further aroma perceptions, as well as texture or consistency, taste and possible sound, all of which help us determine the quality of food. In the chain of perception, a stimulus generates a response via nerve signals to the brain. Specific sites in the brain are stimulated by the initial sensory inputs, and these are translated into a response by the individual. Visual appearance. This is a critical feature as it's the first attribute perceived by the consumer and primary in many purchasing decisions. Typically this will include colour, size and shape, surface texture and clarity. With respect to colour, there are a number of key elements to this. So for example, description. So this is the actual colour name or hue. Intensity, the strength of colour from dark to light. Brightness, purity of colour from dull to pure. Evenness, colour distribution from uneven blotchy to even. Other relevant factors or characteristics would include gloss, transparency, transparency to opaqueness, haziness and turbidity. Taste. Taste is a chemical sense. Taste is technically referred to as gustatory perception. Basically it involves the detection of stimuli dissolved in water, oil or saliva by the taste buds. Now the number of taste buds varies from person to person and one of the major factors that impacts that is age. So from we are infants or babies 
where we're somewhere between eight to ten thousand. Adults, where we have somewhere between four to six thousand. Or as we add into our elderly years, somewhere between two to three thousand. So there is some scientific basis why elderly people often say it doesn't taste like it used to. The taste buds are mostly concentrated on the surface of the tongue. Taste sensitivity, as previously mentioned, varies from person to person. The five most commonly accepted taste categories are bitter, sour, sweet, salty, and unamami. Bitterness. Bitter compounds are often added to food to give them sharpness. These are stimulated by substances like hops, bitter, caffeine and quinine. Sweetness. Sweet compounds are water based and provide the sweetness characteristics to food. Sugars, for example, sucrose, fructose and glucose. And sweeteners, such as aspartame. Sour. These are typically flavours associated with acids. Common acids include lactic, phosphoric, citric and malic. And these are usually ma used mainly as, as preservatives. Salt. Sodium chloride is a pure form of salt. It is extensively used in foods. The main areas are to preserve food, to balance sweetness, other relevant substances include sodium glutamate, potassium chloride. Umami, which can be best described as brothy or meaty. People taste umami through taste receptors that are typically respond to glutamate. Glutamate is widely present in meat broths and fermented products and is widely added to some foods in the form of monosodium glutamate. Odours, olfactory impression. Most of what we perceive to be taste in food is in fact triggered from odour molecules from our food and drink. In practical terms, the definition of flavour is limited to the impressions perceived via the chemical senses from a product in the mouth. Taste buds are quite limited in that they only can pick up sweet, sour, salty, bitter and umami sensations. The sensitivity of the nose is about a thousand times greater than that of the tongue, certainly in that order of magnitude. Volatiles are that group of compounds with low boiling points, or in other words, a tendency to volatilize or vaporize or evaporate easily at relatively low temperatures. Detection occurs when volatiles enter the nasal passage are perceived by the olfactory system. These molecules are detected in the air from the plate as the product approaches, vaporizing as we chew, rising through the nasal passage at the back of the mouth. Aromatics are volatiles perceived by the olfactory system from a substance in the mouth. There is a propensity by samplers to localise aromatics from foods in the mouth. Many people are not aware that most of what we speak of of taste is actually smell. Texture assessment. This encompasses all the perceptions felt by receptors in the mouth other than taste and chemical feeling. It's a group of properties derived from the structure of food and perception of texture is usually done by the following senses. Sight for visual texture, oral touch, tactile texture, sound, auditory texture. Depending on the product type, texture assessment is perceived by one or a combination of these senses. So for example, an orange skin has visual tactile roughness compared to an apple skin. A crisp crispness 
is perceived in the mouth by both tactile and auditory perception. Yogurt thickness, viscosity or consistency can be assessed visually in its container. Manipulation of the product, either using straw or a spoon for example, and tactile stimulus in the mouth. Freshness is one of those things which is commonly associated with observing visual texture. These visual clues can create expectations in relation to the mouth. Any form of discrepancies in visual and tactile characteristics can cause a decrease in the product's acceptance. And it is generally accepted that texture is a key consumer discriminator for consumers of product quality. So for example, if crisps are soggy or meat is tough. Usually viscosity relates to homogeneous liquids or the tendency of a fluid to resist flow. Usually it refers to more liquid products, though some solids act like liquids under stress. There are three commonly referred to texture characteristics. The first one being mechanical characteristics, which relates to the reaction of the food to stress. So i.e. Uh, firmness, compression, hardness, cohesiveness, chewiness, adhesiveness properties. Geometrical characteristics, so related to the arrangement of the physical constituents of a foodstuff, such as size, shape, presence of fibres, soft lumps or hard particles. Again, common descriptors we would use in these cases would be the relative smoothness, whether something is an absence of small particles, grittiness, graininess, chalky powder, presence of fine particles, lumpy, bumpy, those sort of properties. And thirdly, surface characteristics. So looking at it in terms of a continuum from dullness to shininess, roughness to eveniness, wetness and dryness, softness to hardness. These are perceived by tactile nerves in the mouth cavity. In the mouth, they're, they're also related to the way in which these constituents are released. Other variable factors are include mouthfeel, rheological properties and face change. Caffrey Sensory Analysis Support At Caffrey we can offer a wide range of solutions to the food industry with respect to sensory analysis, evaluation and assessment needs. For sensory training we can offer both general principal trainings with regards to sensory techniques as well as more bespoke advanced training with respect to specific product categories. For effective testing we can use and offer our services to the food industry using our CompuSense sensory analysis suite as well as offerings with respect to focus group facilities. We also can assist with problem solving, whether that be a new product formulation, doing benchmarking activities and other programs, as well as taint defects, odor defects, providing some assistance on those matters. For further information, please contact us on our details below. Thank you very much for your time.